country, law enforcement has dramatically beefed up their arsenals. Between 2002 and 2011, the Department of Homeland Security dispersed $35 billion in grants to state and local police. That money, in turn, can be used to buy surplus military equipment. As we watch these events unfold this week, many couldn't help but think that it was a military force, not a police force, that was on the ground in Ferguson. You are the parking lot. This is the St. Louis County Police Department. Disperse now, or you'll be arrested. In a crowd of just 150 people after nightfall, firing flashbang grenades. Okay, this guy has a red dot on him. Look, look right there. You see it? This guy is so far away. And it's raised questions about whether the line between law enforcement and military force has been blurred in recent years. Can you stop aiming that thing, bro? But images out of Ferguson over the subsequent 24 hours paint a different picture. We saw how a heavily armed police SWAT team casually trained their rifles from an armored vehicle on a group of protesters who were demonstrating peacefully just a few yards away. The question tonight, how do military equipment and tactics affect the police mission to serve and protect?